Hello everyone, Coach Tickety here, and today we're going to be talking about Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball got some massive changes this season, and with these buffs coming through, it's made him not only a more viable tank pick, but actually a very popular and strong one in the meta. But Wrecking Ball is still one of the most unique characters in the entire game on any role, and his skill floor is a lot higher than most tanks in the game. So that's why I think Wrecking Ball deserves his own video here, because he really is just so different than every other hero out there, and learning him is very different than learning any other tank. So whether you're just learning Wrecking Ball for the first time, or maybe coming back to the hero after a brief hiatus, because let's be honest, he hasn't been that strong for a while, the tips in this video should help you get the ball rolling, if you know what I mean, and get you on your feet and ready to bring Wrecking Ball into competitive play in Season 3, and hopefully rack up some wins with him. And if you're looking for other ways to improve in Overwatch 2, look no further than Gameleap.com. Over on our website, we've got hundreds of guides made by top-level coaches, and more being added every single week that can help you improve on any role, no matter what heroes you're playing. And don't forget, for this month only, we are sharing the love and giving you a 50% discount on your membership if you sign up this month. So don't delay, click the link below and get your membership started right now. Alright, let's jump right into it. My first tip for playing Wrecking Ball is to remember that you are not like other dive tanks. It's very common to compare Wrecking Ball to other dive tanks like Winston or Doomfist or maybe even D.Va a little bit because of their similar options when it comes to mobility, but Wrecking Ball is really a step above even those tanks when it comes to those options. The other aggressive divers in Winston and Doom are much more linear with their aggression. They pretty much travel in a straight line when they're using their cooldowns and they're much easier to read when they're approaching, and then once those cooldowns are gone, they have to wait for them to come back. Wrecking Ball is constantly in motion. He's always rolling around the map and he's not always traveling in a straight line. One way to visualize these differences is to compare these tanks to other members on another role, say like DPS. Winston and Doom being more linear have mobility similar to someone like Reaper, for example. You can use your cooldowns to get in, but then once you've used them, you have to wait for them to come back before you can do anything else. But we can compare Wrecking Ball to someone like Tracer, who's got a ton of mobility options with her blinks. You'll always be moving in and out of the fight and you'll always have an option to get yourself out of trouble. So even if you have experience playing these other dive tanks in Overwatch, playing Wrecking Ball is a different game altogether. You'll still be looking for similar dive opportunities as these other tanks, of course, but because of all your mobility, you can approach them much more creatively and act more independently, which are things that are very unique to Wrecking Ball. All right, my next tip for Wrecking Ball players is that health packs are your healers. Since you are so mobile, it means you won't often find yourself with your teammates. You're not going to be leading them into battle the same way that a Reinhardt or a Risa does, and and you're not always going to be falling back to them the same way that a Winston or a D.Va does. In addition to that, it's probably going to be faster for you to go find a nearby health pack, maybe even on the enemy's side of the map, instead of backing all the way up to wherever your supports are. It's good to know where they are and good to maintain sightlines when you can, but don't always default to kiting back to them when you need help, and instead try to maintain map control whenever you can by using a few health packs and getting right back into the fight. This playstyle was already a good thing to default to when playing ball, but the buffs he received this season make it even stronger. Longer. With the new 150 shield health that you have, just taking the time to disengage and find a health pack will buy you enough time for that shield to regen itself, meaning even if you only find a mini pack, you'll likely be close to full HP by the time you're getting back to the fight. So whenever you're rolling around the map, make sure you are taking note of these important health pack locations that you can use to get yourself back to full HP during a team fight. And don't default to running back to your support line for heals if you can avoid it because that gives up a lot of map control and will make it harder for you to set up your engages. Moving on, my next tip when you're playing Wrecking Ball is to use the entire map. It is your playground. Since you are so much more mobile than pretty much every other character in the game, by the way, mobility is a pretty big theme of this video if you couldn't tell, then you're not going to have teammates that are always going to be able to keep up with you when you're moving around the map. So don't expect them to. Basically what this means is when you're setting up for a fight or positioning before a dive, don't limit Limit yourself to the space that's safe for your teammates, because you can be pretty much anywhere and still be safe as Wrecking Ball. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that you run all the way to the enemy spawn room and start fighting 1v5 every chance you get, but use the time before a fight starts to get behind the enemy and roll through them from behind or from an unexpected angle so that you have a more explosive dive opportunity. This should hopefully keep you safe during your setup, since the enemy team will likely be looking at your teammates when they're trying to approach from a more common angle, and allows you to play for more explosive engages. You can boot people in more awkward directions, maybe even towards your teammates, and go for more explosive pile driver and mine plays when they can't see you coming and don't know what to expect your engage to look like. And speaking of
of engaging, my next tip is to learn different types of engagements on Wrecking Ball. Now there are probably a million or more ways to approach a fight as Wrecking Ball and get those engagements going, and I don't want to talk about like the mechanics of those or go in depth about what those setups look like, but I'm talking more about what the goal of your engagement looks like and making sure you understand the different types of setups you should be going for depending on how those goals are changing. So to keep this simple, we're going to break down engagements into one of two categories. You're either going for soft dives or hard dives. So let's look at soft engages first. These will look like just simple roll throughs of the enemy team, maybe booping people out of position but probably not committing with pile driver or mines or maybe even whipping out your guns to try and secure kills. This is more about disruption and buying time. You want to use soft engages like these to create an advantage for your team to follow up, not necessarily for you to get the kill. Those advantages will typically look like either booping someone out of position, maybe someone vulnerable off a high ground for example, or it will look like burning through important resources that set your team up for success during a longer team fight. For example, if you can burn through Kiriko's Suzu or force a Baptiste to use his immortality field, you're not going to get a kill during those exchanges, but it means they can't use them later on in the fight and your next engage, which should happen quickly because you're wrecking ball, you're always going back in for more, you should be able to find more value and maybe go for the kill next time. And going for those kills is exactly what a hard engage looks like. This is where you'll commit harder resources like your pile driver and maybe your ultimate and try to finish off targets with your guns whenever you get the chance. You'll typically only want to commit to hard engages when you know you have a clear advantage in play. Maybe the enemy's in a really vulnerable position if they're all stacked up and you can hit them with a big ultimate play, or maybe they've just burned through all their resources earlier and you know you can finish kills more reliably. So try to remember what types of engages you're going for before you commit to your rollout. Are you going for a soft engage to create advantages, or are you going for a hard engage to finish off kills with an advantage? And since you are playing Wrecking Ball, you have very little downtime between your engagement opportunities, which means you can go for a soft dive early to find an advantage, and then come back later for a hard dive to finish the kill. Not every rollout needs to be planning around finding kills. You should be trying to work through important resources, getting people out of position first, and then only committing to kill people who you know are vulnerable. And my next tip for playing Wrecking Ball is that you need to learn how to be bait for your team. If you've ever played against an enemy wrecking ball, you should know by now how hard they are to finally eliminate. And chasing that kill, trying to finish them off as they're rolling around the map, is almost always a waste of your time. So when you find yourself behind the wheel of the hamster ball, you should be looking to waste the enemy's time at every opportunity. Keep in mind that enemy attention is a resource, and it's a limited resource at that. So if you find yourself being focused down by the entire enemy team and they keep shooting damage your way and maybe even using cooldowns and ultimates against you, keep in mind that these are now things that they cannot use against the rest of your team. This is a great way to buy time for your teammates. Maybe they're trying to stabilize after the enemy team just got a good push off. You can take all that attention, taunt the enemy team and run away and buy some time for your backline to stabilize. This is also a great way to help your team rotate through a map into new positions. You won't be able to block damage in the same way that a Reinhardt or a Sigma would with shields, but if you take the attention of enough enemies, they won't be slinging damage at your teammates while they're vulnerable in new locations or just moving around in general. And calling back to our previous tip, these are all great reasons to look for those soft engages instead of hard engages. You're not going to get the kill by yourself, but if you go for a soft engage that gets your team in a more aggressive position, then they'll likely be more available to follow your hard engage later on in the teamfight and helping you secure those eliminations. Wrecking Ball is not an easy tank to master. He's got very difficult movement options and is very unique compared to every other hero in the game. He's very different than every other tank you've played, and he has much more independent game plans leading to more creativity, of course, but also a lot more responsibility on your own shoulders. I hope the tips in this video help give you something to focus on when you're working on Wrecking Ball, but this is one of those heroes where you really need to grind them out. So while this isn't really a tip, my last piece of advice before we go is that you should grind out some time on Wrecking Ball. He really is so unique that you'd really just need to put the time in to get a feeling for his movement. It's like learning Lucio wall riding for the first time. No other character in the game moves like this and you need to get used to the movement before you can expect to play this hero competitively. But I promise you that grind will be worth it. Wrecking Ball is so fun to play, especially once you've got a handle on the movement, and in this season especially with the buffs that he got, he is downright oppressive. It feels like you need to play characters to counter him if he's being played right. But that's all for today's video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you're looking for more tips and tricks for Overwatch 2, go check out the Game Leap website, where we've got hundreds of guides for Overwatch 2 as well as plenty of other games. The guides on Game Leap will go more in depth than the average stuff you find on YouTube and include stuff like role and hero courses, step-by-step -step map and ability guides, and everything in between. Go check it out and start your membership today.